Hey, this is Mr. Coker with Foundations of Algebra Lesson 9 to Greatest Common Factor. To begin with, if I say a factor, I'm talking about uh, numbers that can be multiplied in order to make another number. So, as an example, before I get into the ones that I have on this board, I'll use as an example 10. 10 can be made by doing 1 times 10 and 2 times 5, meaning 1, 10, 2, and 5 are what we call factors of 10. Factors are the numbers that multiply to make another number. Um, when you say greatest common factor, we mean greatest, of course, is biggest, and common is ones, uh, the factors that are shared between two or more numbers. So, getting into this, I'll start by looking at the numbers 2 and 12. And I'm going to do these, and then I'm going to um, put it in the form with parentheses, in the form of a binomial factor and get out. So, we'll see both. To begin with, 12 and 20. In order to find this, we would want to list all of the numbers that are factors of 12, that multiply to make 12. Now, you can just write the numbers down, think them through in your head. I prefer not doing it that way or not teaching it that way. I prefer taking the pairs of numbers that multiply to make 12. Um, so. I'm going to go with 1, and I'm going to write it as 1 times 12, just because I'm putting them together. Then there's 2 times 6, and there's 3 times 4, and that's it. If you don't know these, like obviously I just gave it off, uh, kind of off the top of my head, uh, just going thinking of the multiplication tables. But if you're having trouble with that, um, then the best thing I would think the best thing to do is use a calculator and look at each of the numbers and say, like for instance, 20. First of all, always start with the first with number times one. So 20 has 20 and has one times 20. You always can start there. Then go to two. Well, what's 20 divided by 2? It's 10. You can put that in a calculator if you don't know it. Oh, I put 20 on you, put 10. What about 3? If you put that in a calculator, you'd see 3 is not a factor because three, if you do 20 divided by 3, you'll get a decimal. So 3 doesn't count. Well, what about 4? If you did 20 divided by 4, you would find that it is 5, and you get 4 times 5. That is it. That's all of our factors of 12 and 20. Now, let's look at it and say, what do they have in common? Well, there's always 1. We also, they share 2, and they share 4. Well, which one of these is the biggest? Of course, the greatest common factor. So, let me start again. Every number listed here are the factors. Six and six. Uh, each one has six of them. That's 12 total factors. Three of them I circled in red, and those are common factors that they have in common. And then the greatest of those common factors is 4. So GCF is 4. That's it. I'll do one more regular example like this and then I'll go and do the variables. So 9 and 45. 9 and 45, well what makes 9? Always start with 1 times 9, 1 times itself. Probably for 45, we'll do the same thing. 1 times 9, 1 times 45. 
What about uh, for nine? We can keep going. What about two? Well, nine is not an even number, so two is not a factor. Two is a factor of every even number, but not of any odd numbers. So not two. And what about three? Well, there's three times three. And this is where this comes into play, where I say I like writing the numbers out instead of just listing them. Instead of just writing one, three, nine, you could just say one, three, and nine are the factors, but I, I prefer to put three times three, both because it's streamlined and it's easier, and also because it will come and will be very helpful when we're doing quadratics later. Um, but that's it on nine. Nine is one and nine, and three and three. Well, what about 45? 45, again, one times 45. It's an odd number, so two does not work. Three, if you divide 45 divided by three, you'll get 15. So that is a factor. Uh, four doesn't work. Five works, five times nine. Six doesn't work, seven doesn't work, eight doesn't work, and now we're doing nine. That's one thing you could do. Keep going until you repeat a number. So you could try 45 divided by 6, you get a decimal. 45 divided by 7, you get a decimal. 45 divided by 8, you get a decimal. 45 divided by 9, oh yeah, we already have it. So we're done with our factors, and now we can um, look for common factors. There's always one. We have three. And we have 9. Which one of those is the biggest? Of course it's 9, so in this one our GCF is going to be 9. Okay, now on to with one with variables. So I added a variable this and that variable was x. Now I'm going to do this and I'm going to change it. So I'm going to change the uh, variable after I do it one time. So first off, we have a number and we have a variable. We have 4x and we have 24x. So we have, what I mean is to say we have numbers and variables to look at. I'm going to start with the numbers because I'm going to keep those distinct. So 4, I'm not going to do this a little quicker. Uh, it's the same process, of course. 4 is an easy one because it's... 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. And then 24, we have 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. 24 has a lot of them for the size of number it is. But if you look at it, now we, we can label which ones are the same. 1, 2, before I go, just a quick hint. If you, it, it comes up in both of these. If you, if the smaller number is a factor of the larger number, then that's the GCF. So nine was the GCF between nine and forty-five, and four is are, is going to be between four and twenty-four. That's a short copy. You don't have to. If that does, you don't have to use that. If it, doesn't help, or if it's confusing. So GCF is 4, except it's not just 4, okay? Because we have x and x. We have an x, and we have an x. What are the common factors? Oh, yeah. Each side has an x. That's part of the GCF, 4x. The GCF of this one is not just 4, it's 4x, because they have that in common. Now I'm going to make a change. I'm not going to change the numbers, I'm going to keep the numbers the same. What about if I did 4x plus 24, if I got rid of one of the x's? Well, this side still has an x. Does the other side have an x? No. So what's the common factor? Oh, it's just 4. Now, 
the x is not one of the common factors. Now let's change it again. Now I'm going to change it this time to what about if we had 4x to the second power, or 4x squared, and 24x to the third power. Hopefully you see this and, you're, and you immediately are like, oh no, I get it, I know the answer. But if not, it's okay. So now we have, we still have our four, our numbers haven't changed, of course. But the x's have changed. On this side, on the 4x squared, we have how many x's? Well, we have two. And then for 24x cubed, or 24x to the third power, we have how many? Well, three. Now I'm grabbing these x's out. I'm going, I'm saying, how many x's do we have? What's the most x's we have on both sides? Well, on this side we have two, and on this side we have three. But both sides can provide two. Both, each side can provide two x's. Therefore, the greatest common factor is still four, of course, and x to the second power. Since both sides provide, each side provides two x's, we're going to be able to consider the greatest common factor, and it's going to include those two x's. A shortcut on this is to look at the x's, or whatever the variable is, and look for the smallest number, the smallest exponent if that they have in common. What I mean is, in this case, each side has, each term has an x in it. The smallest exponent among x's is a 2, so our, we could just say it's x to the second power. That's a shortcut. This way, just like I like writing out the numbers, I like writing out the variables for the same reason, um, a little bit easier to visualize. Now, hopefully you've written the stat, you've written down notes, whatever. I'm going to erase this one in the middle. I'm going to do one more example, and then I'll be done. So the next example I want to do is I'm going to factor out a GCF. So in this one I'm going to take, I'll pick some easier numbers. Um, I'll do 3x squared and 6x to the third y. Now remember, this time I'm not just finding a GCF, I'm factoring out a GCF on this one. So here's what we do when we factor out a GCF. Again, we're going to find the greatest common factor. That's always the first thing that we do. I'm going to, I've got 1 and 3, and I have x and x. So I've, 1 and 3 makes 3, nothing else. And then x squared, or x to the second, is 2x's. Now, 6x to the third y. Put a few more numbers in this, or a few more variables for a reason. We have 1 times 6, we have 2 times 3, we have 3x's, and we have a y. Start with the numbers. What's, what's our, where are our common factors? We have 1 and 1, we have 3 and 3. What's the greatest? Of course, it's a 3. Our x's. On this side we have 2, on this side we have 3. What do they have in common? Each side has 2 x's. Only one, one side does it, but that's okay. And then does it have a y? The answer to that, of course, uh, or I should say, does he, do both sides have a y? The answer to that, of course, is no. I said that I like writing out everything because it's streamlined, because it's a little bit, um, it, in my mind, it makes it a little bit easier. It also greatly helps with the factoring. When we're factoring out, I should say, when we're factoring out a GCF. 
So we're going to factor out the GCF now. We, we have our greatest common factor, 3x squared. We're going to divide each side by 3x squared. And we can do that. 3 divided by 3 is 1. x squared divided by x squared is 1. So we're going to have 3x squared, parentheses, 1, minus 6 divided by 3 is 2. x to the third divided by x squared is x. And then y, there's nothing to divide with the y. And then this would be our final answer. Now, I went through that quickly, and I did for a reason. Well, two reasons. One, because this video is about dividing, um, even though it involves dividing here. But it's also, well, I'm going to rewrite this. It's because if you've written everything out, let me show you a very quick way to do this. The greatest common factor is 3x to the second power. I'm going to put that, and then I'm going to put parentheses. because the greatest common factor is always going outside parentheses. Inside the parentheses are what's left. On this side, what's, what's not circle? Right? What, what's left? I shouldn't say what's not circle. I'll make a point on something here. To begin with, when it comes to numbers, three is our greatest common factor. What was multiplied with three? It was a one, right? It's a one. Whatever's multiplied with that GCF, we're going to keep that. How, what variables do we have left that are uncircled? Nothing, right? Our two X's are circled, there's nothing else. Good. First term, done. We had a minus sign, I'm not changing that in this case. Um, look over here. Did we... Did we uh, uh, start with GCF is 3. We didn't ignore the 1 and 6. We didn't use those. Here's our 3. What was left when we, what was with the 3? A 2. So 2 is part of our, greatest, of our factorization. What else is left? Variables that are uncircled. We have an X, we have a Y. I'm just going to bring those down and be done. You can do it either way. You can do it this way, but I prefer this way because to me it's easier just to look at it. Number again, this is only when we're fact when we're factoring out a GCF. If we're just finding a GCF, it's going to look like this, or it's going to look like this one. For factoring out a greatest common factor means that we divide out the numbers. I prefer to do it this way. It's a lot easier. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.